Dyeing Easter eggs is a fun family tradition, and since this year we're trying to avoid synthetics, both in our food and in our life in general, I thought it would be fun to try using natural ingredients to dye our Easter eggs. Food dyes, which are commonly used in the U.S., have been linked to a wide range of health problems, including behavioral problems in children. In other countries, food dyes are often banned or there's limits put on their use. However, in the U.S., it seems we're pretty particular about the color of our food. Manufacturers know this, and so most manufactured foods have some sort of food dye in them. I'm Stacy from the blog, thefromscratchfarmhouse.com, where I share our family's journey to ditching the grocery store and becoming more self-sufficient. Okay, enough chatting. Whether you're watching this video because you want to avoid artificial dyes or you're just looking for a fun experiment to do with your kids, hopefully this video will help you out. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to easily hard boil eggs so they come out perfect in an instant pot. However, if you want to skip over this step or you want to skip to a certain part of this video, there are chapters in the description to help you do that. You are first going to add the minimum amount of water that your instant pot allows when pressure cooking. In my 8 quart, that is 3 cups, but check your manual. Next, take the rack that comes with your Instant Pot and place it inside. Then you can place the uncooked eggs in a single layer on the rack. I used to think that the eggs couldn't touch, but haven't found this to be true. Just make sure they aren't stacked on top of each other. Next, place the lid on, twist to lock, and then make sure that the pressure release regulator is pointing to locked. You are then going to hit pressure cook and adjust the time to five minutes. Now, just let it do its thing. After the pressure cooker beeps to say it is done, you're going to let it sit and slowly release the pressure on its own for five minutes. Set a timer so you know when this time is up. During this five minutes, you're going to fill a bowl with ice water. When the timer goes off, manually release the remaining pressure. I like to throw a towel on mine so that the steam doesn't saturate the shelves nearby. After the pressure is released, carefully remove the lid and bring the pot of eggs to your bowl of ice water. I usually let some cold water fill the pot of eggs to cool them down first and then carefully remove the eggs and place them in the ice bath. You will let them sit there for five minutes. And that's it, perfect hard boiled eggs. All right, now it's time to prepare your egg dyes. Here are the items I'm going to try. Raspberry zinger tea, paprika, turmeric, red onion skins, yellow onion skins, carrots, beets, spinach, blueberries, and red cabbage. I've never done this before, so stick with me to the end here because I truly have no idea how they will work or what colors we will end up with. For the red zinger tea, I'm just going to use four tea bags. For the paprika, we will use two tablespoons. For the turmeric, we'll use two tablespoons. For the red onion skins, we just use the papery outer layer of three red onions. For the yellow onion skins, we did the same. For the carrots, we peeled three carrots with the thought that this would help release its color better. We also rough chopped the beet for the same reason. For the spinach, I just used a bag of frozen spinach. I didn't measure the blueberries, but it was about a cup. The red cabbage turned out to be a very interesting part of our experiment. We ended up chopping up an entire head and then only using half of it the first time around. I'm so glad because it turns out that the length of time you boil the cabbage has a massive effect on the color tone. I'll show you what I mean here in a minute, but for now, just know that you may want to chop up a whole head, but only use half of it at a time. Here I have all of my ingredients prepped and ready to go. I highly recommend doing it this way if you're trying to juggle this project with little ones because honestly it was way more time consuming than I originally had in mind and once I started boiling and prepping dyes I was glad that I had all of my ingredients ready to go. My method for doing this based on what I have read was using two cups of water to boil each of the ingredients in for 20 minutes. Since I only had so many pots and hands I would just boil a few ingredients at a time setting timers for each. I wouldn't set the timer until they reached a boil and then I kept them at a rolling boil for the full 20 minutes. Some things I learned along the way were that the cabbage needed six cups of water in order to boil half of a cabbage at a time, and the onion skins should have had six cups of water as well, although I figured this out a little too late. The water definitely evaporated from the pot of dry onion skins too quickly and obviously wasn't releasing any of its own liquid, so by the end of the 20 minute boil, there was hardly any liquid left for the dye. Then, once each was done, I would remove the pot from the heat, strain and pour the liquid into glass jars, and then add two tablespoons of vinegar per jar of dye. The vinegar is supposed to help the color stick to the eggs and make the colors more vibrant. I did notice, however, that when I added vinegar to the spinach, it completely changed the color of the dye. In case it affected the results, I tried the spinach a second time without the vinegar. The only other one I ended up doing a second time, as I mentioned before, was the cabbage. 
I noticed that the cabbage initially made the water a bluish color, but then over time the water took on more of a purple hue. So just for fun, I used the second half of the cabbage for a second round where I just heated the water, not even coming to a full boil, before removing it from the heat and straining it into the jar. Also, be careful when handling the turmeric and beet water. These two definitely have the potential to stain just about anything they touch. In fact, I splattered beet water at one point and had to kind of laugh at myself when I went running to take it off and clean it before it stained. Please tell me I'm not the only one who worries about stains on my pretty aprons almost more than when I get it on my clothes. Yes, I realize that is somewhat ridiculous. One more side note, when straining the veggies, make sure to press down on them to release any liquid still in them. Okay, once all of the dyes were made, I put them in the center of our table with labels to say what they were and had my kids form a hypothesis for each color, stating what color they thought the dye would turn a white egg, a brown egg, and a green egg. We homeschooled, so it was a great science experiment that all ages enjoyed. The little ones did need some help, and for my preschoolers, we just stuck to guessing what would happen to the white egg. Okay, here's a peek at how all of my dyes turned out. Some really surprised me at how vibrant they were, and others showed little hope of dyeing the eggs at all. My favorite colors with the best results ended up being a surprise compared to how I felt at this point. So in other words, don't make assumptions at this point. I'd also encourage you to try out other spices, veggies, or other natural sources of color you might have lying around your house. After we all made our guesses, my kids all took turns carefully setting a white egg, a brown egg, and a green egg in each of the dyes. Just be careful that the dye isn't too close to the top when they put their little hand in. We did manage to overflow the turmeric, but other than that, it went well. Then I put all the dyes into the fridge overnight. I have a pretty big fridge, so no worries if you can't pull that off. You can just leave them on the counter for less time. Or if you don't plan on eating these eggs, just leave them out until you reach your desired color. Alright, ready to see the results? Here is how they turned out. As you can see, some turned out better than others. I think the biggest surprise was that the vibrant color of the unboiled cabbage did not equal a more vibrant egg color. They were both pretty colors though, so if I did it again, I would do both versions again. My other favorites were turmeric, beets, yellow onion skins, blueberries, and paprika. All right, hopefully this gave you the inspiration to go try this yourself. Have a wonderful Easter. And make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my future content. Welcome to the From Scratch Farmhouse. Come learn with us.